Welcome back to the SketchUp for Architecture students brought to you by the School of Architecture at the University of Queensland. We're going to keep working on our simple timber frame structure here and we're going to finish off the roof and put a, a simple uh, cladding on the top of it. Now we're going to follow similar principles um, as we followed in the previous video. Now I'm going to make some roof battens and then put a sheeting on top of that. So I'm going to work in the plan view. So I'm going to go to my predefined views here. And I'm going to just get my tape measure to confirm what that overall distance here is. So that's 4850. Now I want an overhang of 450 on either side of that. So that's another 900 plus 4850. So that means my trusses, my roof pattern, sorry, are going to be 5750 in length. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to start by just drawing on the ground plane here. So my pattern is going to be 50 millimeters long, comma, and 5750. And there we have our roof pattern. I'm going to go back to the isometric view. Just take a quick look at that. I'm going to give it some height. So I'll give it a 50 millimeter overall thickness. So it's a 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter roof pattern. Now let's give it a material property while we're here. We'll go to wood. We'll give it the same lumber appearance. And we'll turn it into a component while we're here call a roof batten create. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move the batten into location here first. So I'm going to pick it up by this far corner here so that I've got a reference point to that truss. Now I'm going to orbit around, use the Protractor again, make sure that I can hold it to that plane using the shift key. Set up the starting line, then rotate it. We know from when we made the truss that the top chord was 30 degrees, so we can simply enter that value as simple as that. I'm just going to populate the rest of the roof. Again, using the same principles of just working with the midpoint snap points and setting up a few. Uh, grid lines to help along the way. So I'm just going to pick that up, control key to copy. I'm going to find the top point of that component. Okay, going to find the midpoint of this component. Try and find the midpoint of this truss. So I'll just slide it along here until I pick up. There it is, the midpoint in that component. I'll just give myself a, a proper view of what's going on. Now I'm going to draw a simple guideline between the ends of these elements. Pick up the batten control key to make a copy and then just snap to that midpoint of the guideline that I've created delete that. So, you know, by doing, working in this way, just with using snaps and midpoints, we don't have to worry too much about having to dimension everything within an inch of its life, because we can just use proportion to achieve it all for us. So there we have our battens. Now because we've set these out um, to sit on one side of the truss, we're going to have to even them up. So I'm going to select by doing a, a right to left selection. I'm going to try and orbit myself so I can uh, find the midpoint of the component somewhere. Okay, so there's the midpoint there. I'm going to move it, hold the shift key to constrain it. And then I'm going to try and find the midpoint 
of the truss through there. So if we go back to the plan view, we can see that it's evenly spaced. Now, we're going to do the same procedure like we did with the windows and the truss and duplicate this. I'm going to hold the shift key using the rotate copy so that I keep the protractor in the horizontal plane. Find the midpoint of that truss. Start the rotation. Control key to make a copy. Enter a value of 180 degrees so we get a mirror reverse. Look at it from the top and then we can see an even spread of roof patterns. Okay, I'm going to just add a very simple roof sheeting onto that to complete the simple house. I'm going to give myself a new layer, call this roof cladding. Use the radio button to make that the active layer. Now in trying to draw planes along um, inclined surfaces we can use a rectangle tool but it's a little bit uneven and sometimes we can get warping in the plane that we don't expect. So to play it safe I'm just going to take the long way just use the line tool to just define a boundary to create that roof. Zoom into there so I can get to that point there, find the end point there and complete that surface. Now I'm going to give this a bit of depth. 25 millimeters should be suffice. That's a typical corrugated iron uh, profile. And I'm going to triple click to highlight all edges and surfaces. Use my paint bucket. Let's find roofing. Going to do the standing seam. Just apply the paint bucket to that. While it's all selected, I'm going to make a group. I'm not going to be too fussy about making a component because we're only going to be using this element twice. So I'm going to find the midpoint somewhere where I can do a rotation. Again, simple process and in fact starting to find a bit of difficulty finding that a midpoint somewhere so what I'm going to do is I'll use a rotation that is on the edge here and I'll just move it so hold the shift key down to find the edge. So I've got any old midpoint there. Hold the control key to copy. 180 degrees. Enter. And then I'll get a plan view. And I'll just slide this into location. Let's have a look. There seems to be a slight problem here. I've made a mistake somewhere, so I'm just going to pull this up and just snap it to that end component there. Look at that to the extents and deselect that. Okay, so there's my simple simple house with a, a roof over its head. We'll come back in the following videos and look at a few finishing touches to this simple model.